Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com, the histogram in Lightroom. Do you use it? Do you understand it? In this video, I'm going to give you the information you need so that you could better utilize Lightroom's histogram in your workflow. The histogram in Lightroom is actually very powerful and there's a lot of information you could glean from it. Now in this video, we're going to be talking about the histogram that's in the develop module. The histogram is also in the library mod module, but the functionality I'm going to be talking about is unique to the develop modules histogram. Now those of you not familiar with the histogram, all it really is, it's a plot of every single pixel in your image. The darkest pixels are to the left and the brightest pixels are to the right. Furthermore, each pixel is a blend of either of red, green, and blue. And you'll see that the histogram is actually uh, four different histograms overlaid on upon one another. You'll see that there's red in there, green in there, blue in there, and then there's this gray. The gray is the summation of the three other colors, red, green, and blue. So you have this plotted from left to right with your darkest pixels on the far left, your brightest pixels on the far right, and the more of a specific toned pixel you have, the higher the peak. So you can see, let's say over here, uh, we have some kind of mid-tone blue, a lot of those. You can see that that blue uh, part of the histogram is spiking fairly high. And we do have a fair amount of blue sky. So those probably correlate to the pixels that are in the blue sky. Furthermore, there's a big spike over here in the very dark areas of blue. So there's probably some very dark blue in the image as well, and that's the water. So you could see how that it's a real visual representation of your image. Now, one kind of cool thing about the histogram is it directly correlates to the sliders that are in the basic tab. I mentioned that the far left of the histogram are the darkest pixels. And if I hover over that, look at the blacks slider. You'll notice as soon as I hover over the far left hand side of the histogram, the blacks slider in the basic panel becomes active. As I move to the right, you'll see then the shadows slider becomes active. And you'll notice too on the histogram itself, it says shadows. And as I move to the right, to the middle of the histogram, you'll see the exposure slider becomes active. And it says exposure on the bottom of the histogram. I move to the right, you guessed it, highlights becomes active. And if I move to the right some more, to the very end, whites becomes active. So that's the representation of all those tones in the image. Highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, and exposure. Now, one other real quick thing before I get into the real juicy parts of the histogram, you'll notice that at the bottom you have information. When I am not on the image, we have the ISO I shot the shot at, the focal length, the aperture, and the shutter speed. If I hover over the image, you'll see LAB. That's the lab color space. L is for lightness. Uh, it goes from 0 to 100. And if I go over a brighter part of the image here, you could see that L has a value of 73.9 at that point. And if I hover down here at a darker area, you'll see that the L has a value of 0 0.3. So that is just indicating the brightness level or the lightness level of that pixel that I happen to be hovering over. A and B are the color coordinates. And um, I won't get into that too much, but if you're really interested in the lab color space, just do a Google search for it. And um, I'm sure you'll find a lot of different articles that explain it uh, better than I can. So those are, that's some information you could glean and maybe somewhere down the line, you need to know the lab um, color coordinates or the lab coordinates for a specific part of your image. Well, there you have it. Now, the best part of the histogram, in my opinion, is you could actually adjust the image right from the histogram. For example, I purposely chose this image because it's slightly underexposed. And you could see that the histogram is indicating that. The entire histogram is shifted considerably to the left. So it's a little bit dark. 
So I probably need to brighten it up. Well, I could go down here and I could move the exposure slider. And you can see, as soon as I hover over the slider itself, that part of the histogram becomes highlighted. Similarly, highlights, shadows, each of those sections become highlighted in the histogram as well as I hover over those different sliders. Well, I could go right up to the histogram and when I'm over the middle of it, the part that represents exposure, you could see that the cursor turned into this kind of horizontal arrow with a vertical line through it. That's kind of indicating to me that I could drag the histogram left and right. So I'm going to click with the left mouse button. I want the histogram more in the middle. So I'm going to click with the left mouse button. You can see the cursor disappeared when I clicked, but I'm just dragging my mouse to the right. And you can see I'm moving the exposure slider to the right. So I could move that to get a more balanced histogram. So I'm brightening up the image. Now, furthermore, I could go over to these other parts as well. Maybe I want the highlights just a little brighter to get that histogram to go from the very edge to the very edge. Then I could go over to these highlights, or the, I'm sorry, the whites area, click there with the left mouse button and drag that to the right until I get it right to the edge. How do you know you went too far? Well, see this little triangle right here? That's our clipping indicator. And if I go, keep going, keep going, keep going, you'll see it turned white. That means I'm clipping all three channels, red, green, and blue, when it turns white. So a lot of people don't want to clip at all, so they'll just back that off until that uh, indicator goes dark. Now if I leave it on and I click on the indicator or just hover over it, you'll see on the image itself I get this red overlay. That's showing me exactly where on my image I am clipping. I'm clipping, in this case, all three channels, red, green, and blue. That red is just the indicator that I'm clipping highlights. Now you may have noticed throughout all of this, the clipping indicator on the left, that's for the shadows that has been lit up the entire time. The image was underexposed, so I did crush the shadows. That's what that colloquially is called. If I hover over that, you'll see some blue form over in here. That's just indicator, the indicator on the image showing me where I'm clipping the shadows. Now, if I don't want to clip any of these, I would go to the far right in this case and just drag it, drag it, drag it to the left until that indicator just turns off right there. And now when I hover over it, you'll see there's no red overlay on the image at all. Similarly, I could go over to the blacks side of the histogram, click with the left mouse button and push that to the right and just keep going slowly, slowly, slowly until I stop clipping. Now, I wanted to show you this. See how it lit up blue? That means I'm clipping the blue channel. If you're clipping one of the channels but not the other two, it will uh, light up in the channel that you're clipping, the color of the channel you're clipping. In this case, blue. It may have been red. It could have been green if I was clipping those channels. And when you're clipping all three, it lights up wet, red. So I'll just back it off till it just the blue just goes away, which is right there. So theoretically, that is an image that is processed so nothing is clipping. And if I hover over that uh, indicator, you can see nothing's clipping. Now, a couple more points about the clipping indicators. If you are clipping, let's clip both sides. I mentioned you could hover over it and you'll get the blue over here in the lower left. You get the blue or the red over there on the upper left. Um, if you want to keep the blue on, click on that indicator and it will stay on. You could click on this indicator and the highlights uh, will stay on as well, that red. Uh, you could then click on them to turn them off. If you just want to turn them very on very quickly to take a look, there's a keyboard shortcut, J, the J key on your keyboard. Uh, hit the J key, you'll turn them both on. Hit the J key again, you'll turn them both off. So what a lot of people like to do is they like to have them on and then they'll adjust the slider or the histogram until uh, they get rid of, in this case, all the blue. Right there, I guess. And then in this case, all the red. So you just back that off till all the red's gone. And then they consider that a properly adjusted image. Now, there is no right or wrong way. Many people don't like to clip at all. 
So to them, that's a properly adjusted image. So I'm going to hit the J key again to turn those indicators off. Remember to do that. I get a lot of emails uh, from people that accidentally hit the J key on their keyboard and they turn clipping indicators on and they have this red and blue on their images and they don't know where it came from. So just remember to hit the J key again and you won't have that issue. Now, personally, I like to clip the shadows a little bit. So I would probably clip them, you know, put it so it's slick. I, I like my images to have absolute uh, black in the, in the image all the way up to almost absolute white. That's the way I prefer to process most of my landscape images. Now, one quick note, when you do these adjustments, let's uh, just for the sake of argument, take that clipping indicator so it's off. So both of them are off. Just be aware that when you adjust other adjustments, such as contra contrast, you're going to move that histogram and you're going to probably clip again. Now, you if you absolutely positively don't want to clip at all, what you could do is add contrast and you could go back up to the histogram and drag it to the left so you're not clipping. Or you can move the appropriate slider. In this case, it would be the whites slider. Also, uh, not so much, but you, in this case it is. It's clipping when I move texture to the right. It will clip maybe if I move clarity to the right, uh, dehaze, and so on. Any of these could cause clipping. Also, if you move vibrance or saturation, you may start to clip as well because you could see all of these sliders affect the histogram. So um, personally, what I do is I adjust my tonal values. And to me, tonal values are exposure, highlight shadows, whites and blacks, so that I'm barely clipping the shadows and I'm not clipping the whites at all, but they're almost clipping. Then I adjust contrast, texture, clarity, dehaze if needed, vibrance, saturation, and I don't worry about clipping from that point on. I just adjust it so it looks visually pleasing to me. That's the way I do it. Now everyone's different, and I encourage you to experiment and come up with something that works for you. But I just wanted to make you aware, basically, that there is a lot of power in the histogram. You could do quite a bit, and it does give you a lot of information, so you get an idea here. Just looking at this, this image doesn't have a lot of midtones in it. It has a lot of shadows and blacks and a lot of highlights and whites. I could obviously get that by looking at the image, but this is just your graphical representation showing you that as well. So um, in this case here, uh, I would probably want to uh, move the shadows more towards the midtones. I would, I think that looks uh, more pleasing. Then I'd probably bring the blacks a little more to the left to give me a little more tonal depth uh, so that I get that absolute black in the image. But I still have um, tones going from absolute black all the way through almost absolute white. So to me, that is a properly adjusted image tonally uh, to this point. And then, of course, I would add clarity and texture and saturation. And then I would probably go in to the HSL panel and do adjustments from that point on. But the main point of this video is just to give you the information you need to better understand it, to better utilize the histogram in Lightroom. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.